Miss Go Electric here. Glad to be back in the studio this week. Today is Sunday, October 12th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. As we've often reported, a few more affordable EVs are coming to the U.S. in late 2025. This week, we finally have enough information to show how some of the upcoming models stack up against one another. Tesla has unveiled the stripped-down entry-level versions of its popular Model 3 sedan and Model Y SUV called the Standard Trim. Priced at $36,990 for the Model 3 and $39,990 for the Model Y before taxes and destination fees, the variants feature a smaller 69.5 kWh lithium-iron phosphate battery pack, reduced peak charging speeds of 225 kW, lower grade suspension system, reduced speaker count, textile seating surfaces, opaque closed roof, stripped down frunk, manual steering wheel adjustment, and removal of physical seat controls, moving those functions to the touchscreen on the dash. The second row touchscreen is also removed in both vehicles, and the front center LED light bar is deleted from the standard trim Model Y. These new trims do not offer the auto steer driver assistance feature, but buyers can purchase full self-driving for $8,000 or subscribe for $100 a month. Tesla maintains that all of their vehicles will have standard features like Grok AI voice assistant, dash cam in sentry mode, app control with a mobile device, and active safety features like blind spot detection and automatic emergency braking. The debut of the more affordable models sparked mixed reactions because the full-featured premium trim level starts at only $5,000 more, at least initially. What do you think? Deliveries of these more affordable standard variants will begin in November. But Tesla wasn't the only one revealing lower-priced models this week. General Motors unveiled the 2027 Chevrolet Bolt, resurrecting the affordable hatchback after a two-year production hiatus. General Motors claims the refreshed Bolt contains 50% new or modified components and starts under $30,000 while incorporating some significant charging and technology upgrades. Initially, only an LT trim will be available priced at $29,990, including the destination fee, and the more basic LT variant will follow later at $28,995. A sportier RS trim is also planned. A new 65 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate, or LFP battery, powers a front wheel drive setup with 210 horsepower, a 5% improvement over the outgoing Bolt EUV. The configuration delivers up to 255 miles on a single charge, which GM claims is the longest of any EV priced below $30,000 available in the U.S. The 2027 Bolt is rated to deliver similar range to the previous model, which had a starting price around $27,000. We see some measurable gains in charging performance. The new Bolt is rated to handle up to 150 kilowatts DC fast charging speeds via a built-in NAX port, making it compatible with most of Tesla's supercharging network. That's nearly tripled from its predecessor's 55 kilowatt peak rate. Level 2 AC charging continues to support the same 11.5 kilowatt peak rate. GM says drivers can expect a 10 to 80% fast charge in just 26 minutes. Several of the exterior panels are unchanged, but there have been some light aesthetic updates. The Bolt retains a compact footprint at about 169 inches long and 80 inches wide, with 16.2 cubic feet of cargo space behind the rear seats and expanding to 56.3 cubic feet when folded. The interior features an 11-inch driver display paired with an 11.3-inch touchscreen with Google built-in infotainment and cloth seating surfaces. Standard safety features include adaptive cruise control, forward collision alert, automatic emergency braking, and lane keep assist with the option to upgrade to hands-free supercruise. Chevy executives stress that the new Bolt's production will have a limited run. As we previously reported, production in Kansas had been cut to just one shift daily ahead of availability. Notably, back in October of 2024 at GM's Investor Day, GM President Mark Royce said the new Bolt would be just one member of a family of Bolts, including an even lower cost option. At that event, there was no mention of a limited run with the 2027 Bolt. It is unclear how many new Bolts will be produced or when the limited run will end. 
Regardless, production will soon begin at GM's Fairfax assembly plant in Kansas, with customer delivery starting in early 2026. What do you think of the new Bolt? As we reported last week, GM and Ford have taken action to keep EV prices accessible after the expiration of the $7,500 federal EV tax credit. This week, both companies have backtracked after a Republican senator pushed back, urging the end of the lease loophole. General Motors says instead they are offering $6,000 as a manufacturer incentive for leases until the end of October. Now that we've covered both the debut of more affordable Tesla models and the new Chevy Bolt, how do they stack up against each other and their fellow affordable competitor, the Nissan Leaf? A driver's personal preferences will indicate which vehicle will be most suitable, but on paper, the winner to me seems to be the Nissan Leaf. It balances value with a solid starting price and impressive specifications. When I filmed with the new Leaf last month, Nissan told me that they would begin delivering an even lower priced variant called the S trim. Like the new Bolt and standard Teslas, that Leaf trim level will feature a lower cost LFP battery with up to 196 miles of range for a starting price of about $25,000. We can expect that trim in the next three to six months. The $31,000 S Plus trim will be available at US dealerships any day now, ahead of the standard Tesla models and 2027 Bolt. If you'd like to dig into the details of the new Leaf, I've included a link to my coverage in this video's description. To note, Tesla standard offerings are about $10,000 more expensive, but they also deliver greater efficiency and their models offer dual motor all wheel drive, which is absent from this competition. Many car buyers and critics say Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are attractive features. Only the Leaf offers that functionality in this group and it comes standard. It's worth mentioning that Tesla provides a very user-friendly interface with some app compatibility like Apple Music, Spotify, and Zoom video conferencing, along with an AI voice assistant. And currently, Chevy has a standard Google built-in operating system with Google Maps and the ability to display compatible Play Store apps on screen. It also supports Google Assistant with Gemini AI Assistant expected to come later this year. Bi-directional charging is not available on any of these standard variants, but all three of these models will offer that capability on the top trim levels. Which of these three affordable models would you pick if you were in the market and why? But wait, there's one more. Another major contender in this price range will now be the 2026 Hyundai Ioniq 5 SE, which hits the dealer lots in a few weeks. The South Korean brand has lowered the starting price of its 240-mile EV almost $10,000 to just $35,000. While it's not necessarily a new model like the other three, it does offer similar features and the price is right. So now which one are you picking? Another new EV detailed this week is perhaps a little less affordable. At their 2025 Capital Markets Day, Ferrari lifted the veil on what will be powering its maiden all-electric vehicle, the Electrica. The vehicle will be a four-door, four-seater built on a new electric platform with the full design to be revealed in the spring of 2026. Powered by four in-house electric motors delivering over 1,000 horsepower in an all-wheel drive setup, the Electrica will deliver acceleration from zero to 62 miles per hour in 2.5 seconds, just half a second slower than Lucid's four-door sedan, the Air Sapphire. Designed and assembled at Ferrari's headquarters in Marinello, an 800-volt architecture will feature a 122-kilowatt-hour NMC battery pack with SK-on pouch cells, offering an estimated range of 330 miles. The company claims the battery pack has an energy density of almost 195 watt-hours per kilogram, the highest of any electric car, and features a cooling system designed to optimize heat distribution and performance. For comparison, the Tesla Model S Plaid pack level energy density is in the neighborhood of 180 watt hours per kilogram. The Electrica's peak charging speeds are expected to reach 350 kilowatts. In a first for Ferrari, the chassis and body shell will be constructed from 75% recycled aluminum. The model will feature independent rear wheel steering up to 2.15 degrees, torque vectoring, an active suspension system, 
carbon ceramic brakes, and adjustable regenerative braking. Ferrari said they have developed a bespoke sound system, which uses accelerometers to capture real motor vibrations and amplify them into a dynamic auditory experience akin to an electric guitar, providing authentic feedback without mimicking traditional engine roars. The model is said to be designed in part by Johnny Ive, who was the lead designer at Apple for 27 years, designing the original iMac, iPod, MacBook, iPad, and iPhone. The brand says they'll show a pre-production vehicle early next year, and they expect to go into production by the end of 2026. During the presentation, the company also revised previous guidance, estimating that 20% of their models will be fully electric by 2030, down from 40%. Well, these have been our top EV news stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you subscribe and share this video online so we can continue producing this show. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.